What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we are continuing with our Christmas horror movie review series and today we are talking hosts and this is a film I've never heard of. First time watch went in completely blind and I'll tell you I left watching that movie completely blind. I knew as much about that movie leaving it as I did going into it. It tells the story of two neighbors that get possessed uh, by what you would assume is maybe like an alien, a demon, you're not really sure and they go into their neighbor's house for a dinner and then they attack them and things start getting crazy from there and that's the roughest outline of this plot i can give because it branches off in about 15 different ways between that point and the end and i will say this is not a movie that is really for me i don't think it's terrible i don't think it's great i think this is a film that could get a cult following to it that some people will really be drawn to especially for the unanswered questions because this movie leaves a lot of loose ends and they're not loose ends that leave you wanting more at the end at least for myself they were loose ends that you don't know why it's there and then you forget about it and then it never comes back up again and then they come up with another subplot and then you forget about it and then it doesn't come up again and it, it they're just a lot of vague directions this goes that don't really seem to correlate but for some they could like that unanswered feeling kind of phantasmy why is this happening i'm not comparing it to phantasm but the sense that you don't really get what's going on and the unexplained could be a plus to some people but i think it just kind of came off as shoehorning stuff into the script for the sake of having it in the script regardless i'll get into my pros and there is a few pros to this movie and I, it kind of adds to it is there is an ominous feel throughout this movie it, it's shot well and this is a very low budget movie and it doesn't really show too much. You can tell by the fact that they've locked it down to one setting, one group of people trying to save money where they can. For the most part, the aesthetic, the atmosphere, it feels good in this movie. They got some cool camera shots, good lighting, good gore, especially for, for what this movie's worth. They have some solid gore. There's aggressive kills with a hammer that's just beating and beating and beating that shows a lot more than you think it would for a low budget movie. You get teeth pulling, blood spitting. A lot of spit in this movie, a lot of drool. There's a scene where she's just drooling down this lady's head. There's a scene where she spits on this guy's face. A lot of that going on. There's a brutal stabbing at the end that's just so fast that it does look cheesy while it's happening, but the effects of it are pretty solid. They have a part where they kind of are trying to explain this backstory to where you can understand what these things are. And they're talking about being banished from lands and they were kicked out of the garden, but now they were able to get back in the garden. You go, okay. You're, it's, it's like a biblical demon type thing is the vibe I'm getting. That's going to have to come up later. It's going to be something with this. They're in the garden. They saw the, these orbs in the garden. But then going into my mixed reviews and my negatives, they tie that in with one of the demons. There's two demons. One of the demons being a guy's son. And he didn't know he was he, he's family and he didn't like that. So he invited him in. It goes into... This mom who had cancer who beat cancer, it goes into the fact that you can possess people by looking at this TV. It, it's that That's where it starts to go all over the place, which brings me into my mixed. They had a cool, I, I wouldn't say cool, but a unique way to show this, in quotes, possession with these orbs and it would light up their mouth. And I'm not saying it was like some great effect, but it was someone doing something different to a possession scene that I, I kind of liked that there was a, a new aesthetic to this possession, but it did look cheesy. And when they would get possessed, their eyes would be this like glowing blue. And I, I it, it kind of showed, I wish they wouldn't have done the eyes. To tie with the atmosphere again, they have this music in the background that's this piano. It's kind of out of tune and out of key. And it starts off really eerie and it kind of builds, but then it just goes and goes and goes and drones on and drones on. So it started to lose its luster. And speaking of droning, going into the cons, any scene in the beginning of this movie especially that does not have to do with this demonic presence being possessed, it is just them talking and talking and talking and talking and droning. And if I wanted to do that, I'll go sit with my wife and we can talk about our daily bullshit. It's that it's that it's that much of just sitting there and just talking throughout the, and it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and they're not adding any substance it's it's not deep it's not fun it just tends to just go and even when the kills start going it starts to kind of linger on of just carrying on it doesn't help that other than that scene where the demon is explaining the garden anything else the demons say is just kind of cheesy over the top it's a little too much. They're, they're, they'd have like weird mannerisms where they turn their head really quick. And it, it wasn't unsettling like I think they wanted it to be. It was just 
quirky, almost comical at some points where it would make me chuckle the things they were saying and the way they were acting. I don't want to critique it too hard to go, why would this character do this? Why would this character not do that? Because I've never been in a situation like that. But there are so many circumstances where it's very questionable what the characters are doing while this stuff is happening. These people who are possessed that come into this house are acting like possessed people. They're just staring off into space. They're turning at 90 degree angles everywhere they go. They're so stoic. They're not talking. They're off kilter. They know these people and they're so different from their personality. And they're there for an hour. They're touring the basement, cooking in the kitchen, sitting down at the table and just staring off into space. They're talking to them. No one's answering. No one addresses it. And that was so weird to me that if you knew people and they were, if you, especially if you didn't know them, you would say something. And if you do know them, you would know that's not how they act. It was just so out of character. The fact that everyone glossed it over like it wasn't a big deal that that's happening was very strange. Speaking of sitting at this table, this mom who they bring up this cancer side plot to where she's going to have cancer before she gets fucking killed. She's talking about her cancer and she's building it up and building it up like like as if I quit my chemo. I love you guys. I you know I have a will. I love you guys. Thank you for the last seven months. Y'all have been great. They said without chemo, I'd only have six weeks, but since I did the chemo, I have seven months. I don't have to do chemo anymore. I'm not going to do chemo anymore. So this whole, the way she's building this up, this whole family's breaking down thinking, okay, my mother decided to, she's done. She's tired. She's going to move on with her life. Then she goes, because I'm in remission for the love of God. Like, is that the most tactful way on a Christmas Eve? And it's not like she said it in a, it's like a two minute spiel of her building this up. Like, I love you, son. You've always been a great daughter to me. Honey, I love you. You've been an amazing husband. Just talking about these ways of saying bye to these people. And then just, oh, just kidding. I'm in remission. What's up, baby? I got you, bitches. No tact. Like, that's how you would go about it was so... I couldn't believe it. With making bad decisions, there's a point where who's supposed to be, I guess, the hero of this movie, the one who makes it out for whatever reason. She's in her bed. The, the demons put them all in different rooms. No one's fought them at this point. They watched them beat their mother with a hammer to pieces. Not one person stood up and tried to tackle it. They got hit with a hammer 30 times. There's six people at this table. Not one person got up to maybe try to stop that. Anyway, they get drugged to these rooms. The, the daughter is sitting in the room, has her cell phone, calls boyfriend, is like, hey, my mom's dead. She got butchered with a hammer. Boyfriend, who, whether it's the demon talking or not, they, they show a part where it could be the demon on the phone with her. Anyway, the fact that her first decision was call the boyfriend and they go, call the police. She says, no, I got to save my little brother. I can't go anywhere. Say, get out the house. I can't leave my brother. Call the police. I can't call the police. I don't want I need to get my brother. Insane that it takes 10 seconds to call the police. You can still go try to get your brother, but make, nope, I'm going to call my boyfriend. Fuck that. My mother just been beat with a hammer. I need to call my boyfriend and talk about how I want him to hold me. Not the police, not anybody else. And she makes the worst decisions of this whole movie. And she's supposed to be the one you're rooting for. There's a point where her and her brother are up in this attic and the demons are giving her this ultimatum like kill your brother and if you don't kill your brother you gotta kill yourself and if you don't wh what we do to him is going to be well worse than what we do to you so you either take him out of his misery or you kill yourself and you give him all of that pain and she decides the brother's unconscious she decides to sit and wait and wait and wait the brother wakes up and then they have this three minute conversation go back and forth of like I have to do it. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Then she tries to kill him, and there's no there's no shells in the shotgun, obviously. You had a minute and a half. If your thought was, I need to kill my brother to save him the future misery, which is a noble thing to do. I get it. The brother has no context. You do. Why would you wake him up to tell him, hey, gonna kill you. I love you. Why would you not shoot him while he's unconscious so it did he has no idea it even happened? Instead, you sit and wake him up and have a three minute conversation so he can watch himself get shot, potentially. Such a terrible move. And then they come out with this subplot that the dad, he's like, this is my fault. That one demon, he's my son, I abandon him. And so this is why this is happening. But that makes no fucking sense. To anything else that's been going on in the movie why did his wife get possessed before him and now why is he here to do this again loose ends that make no sense after the dad's done this the daughter's like i'm gonna escape so the daughter escapes but if you remember correctly she didn't escape earlier or call the police because she didn't want to leave her brother whom she leaves and she escapes to go 30 feet from the house 
and kneel beside a tree for at least 15 minutes. She does not run down the road to go find people. She does not hide further into the woods. She just kneels by a tree. Then this, this guy with gauges and a beard shows up who's got the blue eyes like a demon. So she's staring at a demon. She ends up sitting outside, get, hangs one of them. And apparently when you kill the people in real life, the demons leave their body. But then it shows that at the end, the big reveal is that I guess even if you kill them, there's more demons throughout the world. And it shows the sky with all these demons floating around. End of movie. Th there's so many loose ends that made no sense to this. It had a lot of potential to be, let's make a demon storyline. Let's make this as a father-son storyline. Let's make this the... Nothing. It's just all over the place. Leaves it open. The way they possess people is by shoving their face in front of a TV and it possesses them. I zoned out during a lot. You'll find as you watch this movie, you'll start to space out just a little bit each time. There's a scene where the dad has to choke out his son who's possessed. And he said, you're not my son. It's supposed to show like some arc of having to kill that son because he didn't take care of the demon when he was a kid because he abandoned him. It, it's, it's just twisty turvy this whole plot line again i think this film what it has and the way it goes i think is for some people i think this will have a cult following as time goes on and some people will love this film for what it is how many things are happening in this movie that aren't explained some people that they, they might like this movie and i think it will get a big following for me personally it's not egregious it's not good it's something I won't watch again because I don't have a need to, but it left more questions than answers and not in a good way. So that's my thought on the movie Hosts, guys. If you've seen it, let me know down below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was it your cup of tea? Do you like the demon aspect? Did you not like the demon aspect? The father? Do you understand the plot better than I do? Because I'll be honest, I had to watch that movie and then go read a ton of comments and watch a ton of videos to try and get people to explain this. And everyone is at the same thing where they're like, ah, they do you know? They don't answer a lot. Some people in their in their reviews go, they didn't answer a lot, but the gore and the effects, the atmosphere were very cool. Some people go, they didn't answer shit. I didn't like any of it. So it seems there's a consensus of, even if you think you got a grasp on it, it's just your opinion on what the grasp is. It's not leading you towards the story. But anyway, that's it. Like, comment, subscribe, put it down below. We have more Christmas horror movies coming to finish out this holiday season. Tuesdays, Fridays, movie reviews, Mondays, Thursdays, music reviews. You guys are the best. Peace.